Welcome back everybody. Here's the trading club meeting for November 2015. Time obviously flies. Last month um, we saw the markets absolutely spike up. Enormous short squeeze, equity markets. And the month before September was obviously a horrible month. Market broke down, made the lower high, made the lower low. So technically it was looking horrific. We highlighted why we thought the market would actually bounce. The situation in the US was okay, the situation in Europe was okay, China we didn't feel was as bad as, as people expected and the environment remains one of very very low rates and what you're going to do with your money you might as well put it in stocks and that is what happened, um, stocks had an enormous uh, spike. What are we going to look at this month, the, special, the usual stuff, the, 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 the weekly uh, sheet that we that we uh, that we send out to club members, we're going to highlight some of the uh, trades that can be done on, on on the back of that, and also what we're going to do is look at a special investment theme, and that is focusing on the next decade. The idea I got from this was obviously uh, looking at, at at the markets and knowing what's going on anyway. But there was this uh, Credit Suisse report, which again highlighted uh, some of the themes that are going to happen in the future, and I totally agree with that. And it seems to be a good, uh, a good way of, 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 for the next four months, digging into uh, some of those themes that might help you. Investing today is not the same as it is uh, as it was investing uh, even five years ago. So things, things are changing. There's a lot of disruption going on from new um, technology. People uh, obviously getting older, we we're going to look at that. Um, and there's a lot going on in the energy sector as well. So that's what uh, this, and, and then this month we're going to focus on uh, demographics. So James has done that's a right. lot of, uh, James has done a lot of work on the, this uh, month. Luckily, I've, I've been quite busy myself. Obviously, I'm focusing uh, on the club as much as anything else. But James, uh, James has been focusing on, on, on this uh, theme. So I'm going to uh, let you speak, James. Okay, very kind indeed. And uh, hello, everybody, again this month. It's fantastic to uh, to be going through all of the things that Lex and I follow on a month-to-month uh, -month basis and share with you some of the ideas um, that, of course, we're looking at now. So, with the um, with the demographics theme in mind as a topic of this month's meeting, uh, which will be the last for uh, for 2015, as we don't have one scheduled for December with the uh, the festive period. Uh, Lex and I will be uh, will be celebrating, um, hopefully a good year. Um, we will uh, we will go on to analyse some of the stock ideas uh, before looking at the usual macroeconomic data uh, and across each of the other asset classes, including commodities and currencies that we uh, we cover um, towards the end of uh, of this presentation. So to do this, those of you who have studied with us um, and taken the uh, the Million Dollar Traders course will be familiar with Lex's investment process uh, known as five step trading uh, and it will be this framework that we're going to apply today mainly focusing on the fundamental analysis um, following the idea generation around this particular um, aging demographics theme um, to analyze different stocks and come up with some potential ideas for your portfolio. So just as a quick summary for those of you who um, haven't necessarily come across this before and we'll try and keep this as brief as possible um, by idea generation, the first step, um, we're looking to understand essentially um, how the, uh, the particular market you're looking at or how the world is working and draw ideas or inspiration from certain themes which are unfolding. You've then got to do your fundamental research um, and analyze a particular currency or in this case a company to determine uh, its valuation or fair valuation and see whether there's an opportunity if it's mispriced. And then apply technical analysis, so charting, to help you time the trade a little bit better. So you may have the best idea in the world, um, but if you're, if the price has already rallied 50, 60 percent in the last couple of months, maybe, uh, then clearly you're going to be late to the party if you're looking to buy. Um, alternatively, you could say that uh, it's a very clear breakout signal. So as ever, a lot of this is subjective, um, but uh, this is the process that we uh, we follow here. So we'll be focusing mainly on steps one and two. Uh, to analyze the companies we look at today and of course there are also the psychology and risk management components to take into account um, when it comes to as Lex believes formulating a profitable trade idea. So to the theme of aging uh, demographics essentially simply put the world is getting older and we're observing this uh, throughout 
many developed uh, countries, including the likes of Japan, who have the most uh, senior population in, in the world, um, also throughout Europe and North America, uh, within Europe particularly, uh, uh, Southern Europe, countries such as Italy, um, but also the likes of Sweden as well in Scandinavia. Um, they, are, uh, they are without question um, definitely seeing increased dependency on uh, health services, insurance and so on um, to, uh, to support the population. It's not just the case in developed markets though. Um, emerging markets, whilst in general uh, are quite far behind, they're at a lower base level, they are expected to, uh, to accelerate much faster as a result, or age much faster as a result. There are some companies, we've mentioned uh, Japan, which clearly isn't a, an emerging market, but is still very much um, part of Asia. Um, there are some countries, including um, the likes of Malaysia and other parts of Southeast Asia, uh, who would be categorized or are categorized as emerging countries, uh, which already have um, a, quite a, an elderly or senior population. But the idea here is that emerging markets over the next uh, 20 to 30 years, according to projections, will age two to three times as fast as developed countries, which will still continue to uh, to grow older, um, in accordance with the so-called dependency ratio, which essentially looks at people over 65, so uh, elderly dependents, uh, children essentially under 15, so uh, junior dependents, and then compares that to the, uh, the rest of the population, which really is a proxy for the workforce. And it's those people who have to support uh, folks. Well, I mean, what is interesting here is that obviously the, 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 people, the amount of people over 65 is going up everywhere, but the group of people under 14 is going down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So basically what this is saying is that, um, you know, all, all the young people from before um, are, moving, are, are moving higher, um, but there probably will be less 0 to 14 to depend on. So it's, I guess what it really means is that... Uh, yeah, the, the, the whole population shifts up, um, but there's less people between 0 and 14 relative to people going to be over 65. And that's a good point with like uh, child fertility rates, all the rest. Um, I know China's just uh, this week reversed their uh, the one child policy, um, and that could have you know significant uh, see significant changes in the, uh, the the population there over time. But but also maybe but the dependent opportunities are, are not the same, particularly amongst young people. But maybe the dependency ratio would not be the the ideal um, ratio to look at if you compare it to um, just the uh, amount of people over 65. That's a number yeah. you would actually, for this theme, that's a number you would really want to know, right? Yeah, quite right. So here you can see, um, according to, uh, I believe this is the uh, UN's project projections, you can see uh, the uh, the top chart is... Um, 2012 and the bottom chart or the bottom globe uh, is a projection of um, 2050 so a good 30 years from now and what this shows is the percentage of the population uh, expected currently or expected to be uh, above the age of 60 um, and essentially the darker red uh, or the more red and the darker red you go um, the more elderly uh, the population in terms of the number of people uh, relative to the size of the uh, the population. So only in twenty uh, in twenty fifteen, only Africa is uh, basically yeah green green with less India than well, less than twenty percent, uh, and India with yeah. less than twenty percent uh, older than than sixty. Yeah, and and what this shows, if we just zoom in on that, and I've highlighted some sections here, uh, is that the the developed markets, you know, were already red. <laughs> And yeah. in some case, many cases, dark red, and that remains the case. And yeah. it's not to say there won't be opportunities there, certainly will be, because there's going to be more and more people. However, in terms of the rate of change, this goes to highlight what I mentioned earlier about emerging markets playing catch-up. Uh, you can see the regions highlighted. I think the, the area of greatest change uh, in these regions will actually be within uh, MENA, so Middle East and North Africa. Um, and with that, as we'll see in a moment, with lifestyle diseases and so on, particularly around diabetes, uh, where if you go to the Gulf, there's uh, you know there's uh, an incredibly high uh, prevalence of uh, of diabetes amongst the population. There will be some tremendous opportunities for companies who cater towards um, those conditions, and and it's the case with many other um, healthcare uh, concerns, which we'll be looking at in a moment.